Dear learners and listeners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and I am here with all of you on the new topic which is development and its nature. Have you ever thought why a child behaves in a different way as compared to an adult? Or why there is a difference in their physical appearance? We are usually not aware of the fact that we are constantly changing. Some noticeable changes take place when an infant slowly grows into a child and then gradually into an adult. But some of the changes like intensity in the expression of emotions or the ability to think and reason better, formation of personal values or the capacity to do work independently, although not seen clearly, do bring about a change in the maturity level and competence of a person. This process of bringing about a series of orderly changes leading towards maturity is known as development. In today's program, we are going to talk about development and its nature. In today's program, we are going to answer many questions related to development and the different aspects that are related with it. So, first of all, let us know that what are the objectives of today's program. At the end of this program, you will be able to understand the concept and processes of development, identify and explain the principles of development, as well as you would be able to gain an understanding of the main approaches to study development. And at last, you will be able to differentiate between growth and development. Let us begin with the first question that what we actually mean by development. So, as the name suggests, development is a process by which an individual grows and changes throughout its lifespan. This change may be defined as a progressive series of changes which are orderly and coherent and which leads towards the goal of maturity. That is, how do we mature over the years in our lives? The term progressive signifies that the changes are directional, leading forward and not backward. As we can see in this picture, that how the development is leading in a forward direction, how a person is growing. Orderly and coherent suggest that each change is dependent upon what preceded it and in turn will determine what will come after. That means what was the first stage of development and that first stage of development is going to let us know that what is going to be the successive changes of development in a human life. Therefore, development can be summed up as consisting of progressive, coherent and orderly changes, changes which have a definite direction and that leads forward. Changes which are not haphazard but where there exists a definite relationship between what exists and what will come after. That is come after the next stage. So let us talk about the first objective of today's program that is how development occurs. When we are talking about this question that how development occurs, we should know that there are two main processes that leads to development. The first is known as maturation and second is known as learning. Maturation is that a body develops as we grow in our age. Whereas learning means that what we acquire over the years of development. For example, when a baby begins to teeth or start walking, it is because of maturation. That is how do we grow in years. But when a child acquires the skill of performing specific dance or singing a particular song, it is an act of learning. This means that the two main processes of development are the maturation which is related to the growth in years and learning that is related to acquiring skills over the years of development. Now when we are talking about development, let us know something about the growth curve. What is a growth curve? Have you ever wondered that there are any stages of rapid growth or 
When does maximum growth occurs? Does the pattern of growth changes from stage to stage? So these are some questions that come to our mind when we are talking about development. Let us find an answer with the help of this growth curve. In this diagram, age in years is shown on the x-axis and percentage of growth on the y-axis. The slope of the curve indicates the nature and level of growth. It is clear from this diagram that growth is very rapid in the first three years and in the first year it is most rapid. Thereafter, from five years to approximately 12 years, the pace of growth slows down. This is called plateau stage in which the child is probably assimilating. That is whatever he has acquired, he is trying to assimilate all the skills and making sense of growth experiences in the earlier years. The period following this from 12 to 18 is once again a growth spurt. That means the growth is very rapid. It is a growth spurt stage in which the rapid growth takes place. This is the stage of adolescence and all through continues to take place but the pace is slow. Growth curve indicates that the growth is continuous process with no breaks or discontinuities and that there is no sudden change. Secondly, it also shows that growth is an ongoing process throughout life. As we have already seen this picture and it is clear that growth is a continuous process. Continuously the human being is changing and there is no sudden change because it is very much clear that the changes are very much relevant to the preceding stage. From the growth chart, it is clear that infancy, early childhood and adolescence are the three stages of maximum growth. This is evident from the nature of skills acquired during these stages. In infancy and early childhood, there is considerable psychomotor development, language acquisition and improvement in cognitive skills. During adolescence, there are rapid body changes. The sex drive begins to operate, cognitive and social skills improve and there is gradual increase of all human capacities. We can notice these changes if we observe little children, adolescents and adult in our surroundings. Now, this was all about the growth curve. Let us know something about the principles of development. That is, what are the certain patterns that are followed in the development patterns? The first principle is, development follows a pattern. That is, in human beings, development takes place in an organized, orderly and patterned fashion. Every species has a specific pattern which all its members follow. That is, the sequence of development is the same among all the species as you can see in the present picture for humans as well as the other species. For example, all babies learn to turn over crawl, stand and then walk. They may skip a particular stage but the order or pattern will remain the same. The second principle is development proceeds from general to specific that is global to analytical. Now what is it? The child's responses in all phases of development whether it is a motor or a mental development are first of a general sort before they become specific or differentiated. For example, the newborn first moves his whole body at one time, then learns to move a specific part of it. Thus, if a toy is kept near an infant, he will use his entire body to move close to it and catch it. An older adult will merely st stretch out his hand knowing that this specific movement will serve the purpose. In speech, 
the child takes out sounds called babbles first before saying words similarly all playing things are twice before specific names are learnt and a vocabulary is acquired that is all play things are twice is a global thing and when you acquire a specific vocabulary is an analytical thing or is a specific thing observation of children in a daily lives will show that they do simpler things first and the more complex ones later on the next principle of development is development leads to integration as i have already discussed what is integration integration means first of all you learn specific things and then you integrate all those things in your behavior once the child learns specific or differentiated responses then as development continues she can synthesize or integrate these specific responses to form a whole for example the young children learn to speak single discrete word in the beginning later he can join together these sentences in the form of language that we speak similarly a young child may have a specific concept of a car later as she grows her concept expands as she is able to synthesize new aspects into it that is the child will learn the or differentiate between different aspects of a car the next principle of development is that development is continuous what do we mean by a continuous development growth starts from the time of conception of the baby and continues till maturity physical and mental traits continue to develop until they reach their maximum level of growth growth occurs at a continuous rate and does not take place in jerks and stops this is a picture that shows the picture of a child when the child is in the mother's womb in this picture also you can see that how the child is developing inside the womb another principle of development is that individual differs with respect to the rate of development that is there are individual differences among the development stages that is the pace at which development take place may vary from person to person for example a 3 year old child may be able to recognize the english alphabets whereas the another 5 year old may not be able to do so it is simply that the rate of acquisition of a skill may vary from child to child that does not mean that the 5 year old child is not capable enough but this shows that there is a difference of development between the two children of different age groups that is the development differs from person to person the next principle of development says that development occurs at different rates for different parts of the body this means that neither the growth of the different parts of the body nor the mental growth takes place at the same rate the different aspects of physical or mental growth take place at different rates and reach maturity at different times the very important principle of development says that development proceeds from egocentrism to all centrism as the name suggests egocentrism means thinking about oneself only and allocentrism means to include others point of view also this means that initially a child is very self centered and does not think of others for example you might have seen a 2 year old child who throws tantrums and cries for a bar of chocolate at midnight he is unable to understand that his demand cannot be fulfilled as the market is closed at this time this is how the little children shows their tantrums or throws their tantrums but as he grows older however this egocentrism gives way to allocentrism or being others oriented or considerate to others that is you might have seen a 10 year old child 
having the same desire as the two year old child but will thus not make this impossible demand since he or she will wish not to trouble the parents because now the child has acquired the understanding that this time it is not possible for the parents at midnight to bring a chocolate for him or her. Another principle of development talks that development proceeds from heteronomy to autonomy. What is heteronomy to autonomy? Heteronomy means dependence on others, while autonomy means you are self-reliant. For example, children are dependent on others for their care, welfare, but if you see the adolescents, they are capable of taking care of themselves. This shows the movement from heteronomy to autonomy. As we can see in this picture that the little child is very much dependent for anything on his or her mother. Whereas as the child grows up and becomes an adolescent, he or she becomes independent enough to fulfill his or her needs. The next principle of development says that development is predictable. Now, what is a predictable development? As we have already discussed that the rate of development is fairly constant for each child. This shows that it is possible to predict the future level of development of child and to what degree he will exhibit particularly so for height, weight, cognitive ability, etc. That means from today's development pattern of the child, we can predict that what is going to be the development pattern of the child for his or her whole life. Now this was all about the principles of development. But we must know that how this knowledge of the principle of development important to us. So the knowledge about the principles of development helps us to know what to expect and when to expect it. This provides an accurate picture of the child's capability at a particular age. It also gives information on when to stimulate and when not to stimulate the growth in the child. That is, provide opportunity or wait for the maturation. That is, we do not have to, the parents do not have to hurry or panic about a particular stage. It also helps the parents, teachers and others who work with children to prepare them beforehand for the bodily changes, interests and behaviors that are to take place in a particular child. The principles of development thus provide the base to understand the different stages of development which an individual grows through. However, the rate and pattern of development can be changed by certain conditions inside and outside the body. Certain factors like the nutrition, sex, intelligence, injuries and diseases, race, culture, etc. also contribute to these differences. So this was all about the principles of development and why these principles are important in understanding the development process. Now, when we are talking about development, we should also know that what are the different approaches that helps us to understand the development process. So, the two main approaches to study the human development are known as number one, the cross-sectional approach and number two, the longitudinal approach. As the name suggests, cross-sectional means that we are going to take different people of different age groups. That is, it implies studying several representative children of different ages at same point of time. There is usually one observation for each child and developmental changes are identified by including children of different ages in the study. For example, changes in intellectual ability may be investigated by comparing the performance of representative samples of one year, two year, three year olds and so on. That means this helps us to know, this cross section helps us to know that what is going to be the cognitive ability of a child at different ages. 
There are certain advantages of this approach. These advantages are, first of all, it prevents the loss of sample strength which occurs in studies for long duration. When I am talking about the representative sample or the sample strength, you should remember that we have already discussed these terms in the earlier lessons in how psychologists study. There we have discussed that what is a sample and what is a representative sample. So let us come to this point that the cross-sectional approach prevents the loss of sample strength which occurs in studies of long duration. You will understand this point when we are going to discuss the next approach. It is cost effective, saves time and facilitates record keeping as well as this cross-sectional approach is practicable also. However, there are certain disadvantages that are there with this approach. The first is the totality and the individuality of the person is lost. Why the totality and individuality is lost? Because we are taking not only a single individual, but we are taking the different individual at different age levels. As we have discussed in the earlier example that in order to know the cognitive capacity, we would be taking children of one year, two year, three year, four year, that is cross section. So in this, we are not taking one individual, that is totality is lost. The second disadvantage is that there is a loss of developmental continuity in studying the persons in the sample. Developmental continuity means that there has to be a continuous growth in one individual. But because we are taking people from different age groups, then this continuity is lost somewhere when we take up this approach. The next approach to understand the developmental process is known as the longitudinal approach. Now, what is a longitudinal approach? It is a lengthwise study of development, as the name suggests, in contrast to the earlier approach. This approach emphasizes on the study of the same person over a period of time, noting the stability and changes taking place during that time span. Thus, if a set of newborn babies constitute the sample, they are seen through infancy, early childhood, late childhood, etc. That means in cross-section approach, we were taking different children pertaining to different age group. But in longitudinal approach, you can remember this with the word longitudinal. In longitudinal approach, we are taking one individual and we are trying to understand the developmental process of that one individual through infancy, early childhood, late childhood, etc. But there are certain disadvantages of this approach. What are these disadvantages? That is, the difficulties are encountered in keeping contact with a large sample over a long period of time. That means, it might not be possible for any researcher to keep record or to track a large sample of particular individuals for a long period of time. They may die, they may get lost because they might change their uh, geographical conditions or they may become sick. That means the difficulties in keeping contact with large sample becomes difficult over time. The next disadvantage is it is really time consuming and very expensive. And the last is that repeated testing makes the subject test wise which affects the scores. That means when they are taking the subjects, they become conscious and this might affect the results of the scores of understanding the development process. So dear learners, this was all about today's program in which we talked about what is development, the principles of development and why those principles are important as well as the different approaches to study development. Before I end up for today's program, we should summarize that what we acquired in today's program. First is development consists of progressive, coherent and orderly changes and these changes have a definite direction that leads forward. Changes which occur are not haphazard in nature. Development occurs through two main processes and those two main processes are maturation that is your physical growth 
and learning that is your socio or emotional growth which or you can say that how do you acquire things over time we also talked about the growth curve and we came to know that the growth curve helps us to find changes in the course of development the period of maximum growth and change in the pattern of growth we discussed about certain principles of development there are six principles that we talked about the first is that development follows a particular pattern second is it proceeds from general to specific that is the development proceeds from acquiring the general abilities to acquiring the specific abilities later on in life once the general abilities are acquired the third principle says that development is continuous and it leads to forward direction the fourth principles talks about that individual differ with respect to the rate of development as we discussed in the earlier example that what is the rate of development or acquiring skills between a 3 year old and a 5 year old that might differ that is there are individual differences that exist when we talk of development the fifth principle says that development leads to integration and the last principles talks that development occurs at different rates for different persons in the end we talked about the two different approaches that helps us to understand the development process and these approaches are cross sectional approach in which in order to study the development process we take the people of different age groups and then we try to understand the development process in the longitudinal approach we discussed that longitudinal approach is another approach of studying the development process and in the longitudinal approach what we do instead of taking people from different age groups we take one individual and try to study the development process of that individual right from infancy till the later years in his or her life so dear learners this was all about today's program i hope you have well understood the concept of development and its nature thank you